Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is talk to you about some brushes. Okay, it takes a very special brush to do the dry brush, and the definition of our dry brushing is that it leaves a dry, scratchy look. Okay, I've got a couple of filberts here. This is a filbert that is perfect for doing leaves and, um, and stroke work and stuff like that. It is cut evenly all the way to the tip, and it has very little, it has taper right at the end, but very little taper from side to side, and it'll do just a snap perfect little leaf, okay? This is a brush that is um, also a filbert, so filbert is defined by being cut across the, um, the top, but its bristles are softer, and I like to use this brush for doing really loose like hydrangeas and things like that, because it kind of sits down and it'll kind of plop out just a little bit. It doesn't have really good spring, um, but it's perfect for doing a hydrangea. This is the one that we call Patty's Favorite Dry Brush, and it's actually um, an oval glaze brush. It is a filbert shape and it is um, tapered and I think you can see that it comes to a pretty good point there and it's tapered from about halfway to the point and it's very like um, bouncy springy when you when you when you push down on it it pushes back up at you okay and that's super super important okay so what happens is is that as so with the filbert brush as you stroke down on the project the first bristles will hit the ground like your longer fingers and then the next and then the next. And then when you flip off to do the, the scratchy look, um, what happens is then they leave at different time frames. So then you end up with even scratchy looking paint. Okay, and it sounds a little bit weird, but that's, that's like how the technique goes. Loading the brush is a super important step um, and it's super easy, but you've got to kind of trust. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to rinse my brush out and then I'll pinch out all the water. And you can wash your brush as you go. Um, that's not a problem, just make sure you pinch out the water so you don't have a bunch of floating stuff. So I'm gonna approach my puddle of paint right at the edge and pull it out and press. I'm pressing all the way flat on my brush and I'm gonna pull it out a little at a time. I don't wanna reach in and grab a whole bunch. I don't wanna scoop. What I'm gonna do is build a reservoir on top by pressing hard on the bottom. Okay. The more you have on the top, then the stronger your colors will be. When I first learned how to do this, I was not loading my brush generously enough. Okay, so we're just going to get that loaded, and I'm looking for a wad of paint across the top, and you can see that I haven't quite reached that yet. Load, 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 and I'm twisting my brush just a little bit to prevent what I call side um, saddlebags which is the little deposit of paint on either side. And that's pretty darn even right there. And then the bottom is flat. You see there's no shine. Then on a flat paper towel, you always flick just to get the immediate paint off of that edge. Okay, and then I think I'll show you on paper because it's easier to see on white with this dark color. I'm going to approach my stroke with a reaching out, dragging across, and lifting up. Okay. So I want that. I want to see scratches. And it helps if you practice doing even strokes, just even texture going across. And what happens is you get layer upon layer of these things, of these strokes, and you can't actually see where things stop and start. And the very first time you can. And then the other important thing is we're going to be going dirty brush from one color to the next, which is going to make all of these colors just blend perfectly. So we'll start with the darkest and we'll work our way up. And I generally do dry brushing on a black or a dark surface. Okay, now I've talked quite a bit, so I'll refresh my paint. I'm going to make sure I don't have a side saddlebag. Okay, and then you always start with your, your dark color. And what's neat about that, and I've forgotten a line here. I'm get out my ghost writer. And this erases with um, water the eraser, spit, and um, you, that way you don't end up with lines um, on your piece. So I'm going to turn my brush a little bit for this long first stroke. My brush at handle is straight up and down, and then I don't want to cover my lines. I want to go up to my lines, but don't want to cover them. Then I'll tweak my brush back the other way to get into those little cracks, and that's the very first step. Okay, so I'll go through, and I will continue 
in all of this, the, um, the sections, and then I'll erase my lines.